there's a specific installation installation section of the code and there are about 12 things that are called out in that section. One of them is um, attic eave baffles and it's changed slightly in the 2021 IECC. Um, it now says that you have to have the attic eave baffle. Uh, the attic eave baffle needs to be installed in order to have uh, an air space for the ventilation air to come from your soffit up and into the ventilated attic space. The attic eave baffle needs to be continuous down to the top plate here and needs to be on the outer edge of the top plate so that insulation can sit on the top plate and insulate that, that section of the assembly there. Um, and then the last thing that's really new in the 2021 IECC is if you don't have continuous soffit uh, ventilation system in the, your assembly, you have to have, you still have to have continuous soffit baffles because what happens is if you put a baffle over a single vent, that ventilation air often bypasses the baffle and still gets up into the insulation, potentially blows that insulation off the top plate, but definitely impedes the ability of that insulation to achieve its rated R value. So now uh, you have to have continuous soffit baffles in each bay along this stretch of roofing. Uh, that is the requirement. In the specific insulation requirements, it talks about attics without vent or with ventilated spaces and without ventilation spaces. We're going to talk specifically about attics with ventilation spaces. So the requirement in the 2021 ICC in Climate Zone 5, where we are right now, is that you have an R60 attic. But it says that I can drop that attic insulation down from R60 to R49 if that insulation at its full height of R49 insulation is achieved over the top plate here, which means that I have to have a raised heel truss in order to do that. In previous codes, it was similar. They did the same thing. So in essence, it's a requirement for raised hill trusses because if, even if I was installing an R30 attic uh, insulation over the top plate, I'm going to need about 10 inches of height there with the extra space for my ventilation vent and eave baffle there, I'm gonna need about a 12 or 13 inch uh, height in order to achieve that specific level of insulation over the top plate. So this is one of those areas where there's an R value requirement and there's an installation requirement. And so remember, wherever there's an R value or U value requirement, I might be able to choose a different compliance option to put either less or more insulation there, depending on how I want to do a trade-off there. But the installation requirement remains. And in this case, the installation requirement is that the attic insulation covers the top plate. So if I do a trade-off and I am no longer putting R60 attic insulation in my attic, and maybe I've traded off all the way down to R38 insulation in my attic, I'm still going to have to have a raised hill truss in order to get that R value over the top plate here. So one of the things we should be looking at is what is the height of the R, R value of that top plate? Does it, can it receive the prescriptive pathway of allowing you to put in less insulation? Or do, does this builder need to move to a performance compliance option where they can trade off for even less R value over the top plate?